Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Elder Scroll the 4 Oblivion, the remaster. We're going to start by optimizing Windows and after that we're going to optimize your Radian and Nvidia setting. After that I'm going to show you how to force the LSS 4 to have a better image quality and more performance. And at the end we're going to look at the in-game settings. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings. And we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're going to start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to disactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D. They're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processors. If you have any other processor, just disactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is disactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode honestly is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power. Uh, back then, uh, we were recommending to use the best performance, but now honestly just use balance you will have better boost clock longer boost clock uh, i did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance and honestly i'm getting better result with balance so super important to do that another thing uh, i want to mention is some recommendations so make sure that your uh, xmp profile is activated if you have it on your bios super important Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your cpu if you have an amd or intel also, make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest updates from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now let's go to the NVIDIA app. The first thing that I want to recommend, uh, I'm not a huge fan, honestly, of the um, overlay. So NVIDIA overlay, I really recommend to disactivate this one. Sometimes it's causing issue like stuttering. You're losing some FPS with it. So I really recommend to disactivate it. Also, we're going to go to the control panel. I'm going to show you some optimization that you can do. So we're going to go to the manage 3D setting first. So the first thing that you should definitely activate it is your low latency mode. Make sure this one is at on. Another thing that I recommend is your power management mode. This one, pretty much the same thing than the, the, the one from Windows. Make sure that you're using normal. Don't use the maximum performance. I'm getting also better boost clock, more FPS with it. And the last one is your shader cache size. By default, your cache will be a driver default like this. And normally it's 4 gig. Uh, I recommend to start with 10 if you don't have a lot of space on your computer. And if you have a lot of space, go with 100 gig. Honestly, it's a game changer for your cache size. Uh, you're going to struggle less with stuttering and also that your game need to recompile and stuff like that. If you install a lot of game, uh, this one can be very good for you. Now let's go to change resolution. The last one, really important to make sure that first of all, that you're selecting the uh, monitor, uh, that uh, first of all, you're using the native resolution of your monitor and also super important to have a proper refresh rate over there. Uh, by default, sometimes when you just change your monitor, it will be at 60 Hertz. Uh, so depending on the type of monitor that you buy, 144, 240, make sure that you're selecting this one. This option also, you can change it on Windows or your Radeon driver if you have a Radeon car. So no problem with that. The last one is your G-Sync. If you want to activate your G-Sync, really important to select the monitor. It needs to be compatible and you will enable over there. Uh, I'm not using G-Sync me. I always unlock my FPS because I want the lowest input lag. But if you don't like those steering line, definitely activate your G-Sync over there. This is pretty much it for the NVIDIA parameter. Now let's go to the Radeon one. So now for Radeon card, we're going to go to settings, display first. 
Make sure that you're using your free sync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're going to make sure that you're going to synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. After that, we're going to go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile. So don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070 XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, Fluent Motion Frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game. But this one can help with uh, older game. Uh, don't use Anti-Lag 1. This one is not good. Don't use a Radiant Boost. Radiant Chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be 100% uh, utilization for me. So you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer. But sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed. Just go to Assassin's Creed and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in game or a sharpness slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging, but uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty. So this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver. And I also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort. So you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. So now for DLSS4. So when you will install the game, uh, the game comes with the uh, DLSS 3.7.2. So if you have an RTX card, just go to your NVIDIA app, click on the three dot, press refresh. You're going to make sure, first of all, that you will see your game because after the installation, mine was not there. Indeed, the DLSS override, override the model preset. Click on this and normally you will need to select the latest version over there and you will force the DLSS for with this. You can apply. Another thing that you can do here, it's with the uh, DLSS override. You can uh, force uh, different modes, so you have the LLA, quality, balance, etc. Normally, those modes are in the game, but you also can use custom. So for an example, the, uh, the quality mode is 67% 60 of your resolution, and it will upscale it back at 100. But what you can do, for an example, you can select custom, go with 80. You're going to gain less FPS, but you will have a better image quality. For an example, if you're using the LLA, it stays at 100%. And normally with the LLA, you're going to lose 10 to 12% in your FPS. This is the best image quality, but you're not going to optimize your FPS with it. And also, you can just stay at default and just change it inside of the game. But I just want to show you that you can do it manually over there. So now let's go inside of the game.
So inside of the game, so first of all, window mode, make sure that you're playing full screen, less input lag and more FPS. Display resolution, make sure that you're playing native, don't lower your resolution over there. We're going to use some upscaling technique anyway. I don't use the V-Sync and in a way it will be deactivated if you use frame gen. I re always recommend to use G-Sync and FreeSync if it's available, you will have less input lag. It's a more modern way to deal with tiering. If not, definitely you can use V-Sync. You're not playing Counter-Strike or Valorant, so you don't really care about your input lag, but still I want to mention it. Frame rate limit, I'll use the limiter from NVIDIA and be careful with this game. Uh, I didn't add any frame limit when I uh, opened the game and in the menu I was like having 600 FPS and my fan went crazy on my CPU and GPU. So <laughs> be careful. Sometimes it's better just to cap your FPS. And by the way, I kept my FPS at 237 because I have a 240 hertz screen and I'm using G-Sync. So uh, if your FPS go higher than 200, 40 hertz you're gonna lose g-sync so always lock your fps to to three fps less than your maximum refresh rate for free sync or g-sync after that uh fov first person or third person don't go too crazy with this one if you go uh higher you're gonna lose fps so look at this motion blur always deactivated to have a better visibility and i recommend to deactivate screen space reflection a nice four percent boost over there so now I'm going to show you my uh, graphic parameter. Uh, everyone have a different goal and really depend. Do you use frame gen? Do you use the LSS? Uh, do you want to have 60, 120 FPS, whatever? So I will just show you which one is worth to change. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. First of all, view distance quality. This one is pretty huge. 4% different for each bracket. My recommendation is play at medium for now. And by the way, I feel like uh, Radian and NVIDIA didn't update their driver for now. Uh, you're getting some random drop in this game. So I, I know it's a Bethesda game. It's always like that. But still, it's really weird. Even with frame gen on, I'm getting some crazy drop. Uh, effect quality. This one, if you're struggling in fight, uh, definitely go with low. If not, go with medium. Foliage is not that bad. It's like 2% for each bracket. So I recommend to go with high if you want to keep a decent foliage quality. Uh, shadow, this one is huge. 4% for each bracket. At low, the game looks very flat. So my recommendation is play at medium. Global illumination, same thing. Go with medium. You're going to save like 7% boost in your FPS. So pretty cool. Texture quality, this one, uh, it really depends on the amount of VRAM that you have on your uh, GPU. So if you have 8 gig and more, go ultra. 6 gig I, 4 gig medium, less than 4 gig, go with low. Reflection quality for now, go with low. Uh, it tanks your FPS like crazy. I feel like I'm, I was having a lot of drop because of this one at I. I did the test even at medium, but for now, definitely go with low. Post-process quality really depend. Uh, if you like post-processing, definitely go with medium. If not, go with low. If you feel that your game is too blurry, definitely go lower. And at eye, honestly, the game looks very blurry with it. I don't recommend to use eye. So me, I'm playing at low. Air quality, cloud quality. This one is a bit tricky. It's fur, uh, fur object and uh, the quality of the air. Uh, I did a couple of tests on my main PC, but also on my second PC. This one can tank your FPS a little bit. So my recommendation is go with medium and cloud quality. Definitely go with high. It's like 1% different for each bracket. So I think this is the best uh, parameter to optimize your FPS. Lumen hardware RT definitely deactivated. It tanks your FPS like crazy, like 15%. Don't use that. Lumen software RT quality, go with low. Now we're in the upscaling uh, technique. So I'm going to show you three different ways to, to think about this. First of all, you have an RTX card, 4000 and 5000 series. Definitely DLSS quality and use DLSS 4. It's really, really good. Even balance is look better than the quality of uh, DLSS 3.7. So DLSS 4 is really amazing. Uh, definitely go with quality. If you just want image quality, you're going to gain 10% boost in your FPS. You have a sharpness filter, something like 50 to 60. If the game looks too much like an Instagram filter, go lower. If it's too blurry, go higher. Me, I like to play at 50. Definitely use frame generation. 40% boost with this one, so it's pretty huge. And if you have NVIDIA Reflex, go with enable. If you have an RTX card, 2000, 3000 series, you will have to make a choice. If you don't struggle with your FPS because you don't have the frame generation, 
Definitely use the LSS at quality and force the LSS 4. It will be amazing. But if you don't have that and you're struggling with the game, I recommend to go with FSR and use quality with FSR 3 and use the frame gen from FSR. It will really help with your FPS. The only thing is FSR 3 is not near from the LSS 4 for your image quality. So you will have to make a sacrifice. If you have a radiant car, run FSR 3 quality and uh, frame gen at on i hope they're gonna push fsr4 in the future with a patch but uh the best image quality for sure it's the lss and if you push the fourth version it's amazing honestly so i'm gonna put this at on so this is pretty much it guys if you have any question just come in, in the youtube section post me your rig cpu gpu and ram i will try to help you the best that i can and don't forget to subscribe to the channel